you for joining us. My name is Peter Tisavelli, and I'm your host today. Uh, this event is the opening session of the e-commerce business and technology workshop series organized by Protector, a group that curates tech forward events. I'm super excited to introduce you to today's guest, my friend Claude Jones, the leader of the Walmart Labs office in Carlsbad. Uh, in case you aren't familiar with Walmart Labs, they provide all the software development, IT, basically all the tech for, for Walmart, the biggest retail chain in the world. Here in the Carlsbad office, they focus on the online grocery shopping experience and Cloud leads a few hundred people who work on related projects. He is the founder and board member of the San Diego Tech Hub, where I'm a board member as well. That's how we know each other. We work together to make the San Diego Tech community better and stronger. Cloud is also the founder of the Practical Leadership Guy, where he offers services on motivational speaking and life coaching. In addition, he runs a nonprofit called the Elevate Foundation with his wife's wife. Uh, did I mention that he's an author as well? I mean, this guy is some sort of Superman. I don't think he ever sleeps. He's definitely the most inspiring person I've ever met. I wish we could talk about his life story, uh, the journey of where he started from and how he got to where he is. That's a truly inspiring story and hopefully we will get a chance to cover that in a future episode. But today we are focusing on how Walmart is using tech to scale their business. Claude will talk about online grocery pickup, self-driving cars, drones, and, and more. But before we start, I need to say thank you to our sponsors, the Stylers Group, which is a software development agency focusing on digital transformation and e-commerce solutions, and the Braining Hub, which is an educational center that curates corporate trainings and hands-on courses on subjects such as AI, data science and many programming languages. I also need to say thank you to the team behind the scenes who helps organize all these events. If you have any questions during the presentation, please write them into the Q&A section and we will try to answer all of them. I believe that's it. Hey, Claude, welcome and thank you for being here today. How are you doing? Hey, Peter, how are you doing? I'm excited Good. to be here. Thank you so much for the introduction, man. I'm, I'm humbled, humbled by your words, my friend. It was all true, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, what you're saying is, is true. Um, are we ready to get started? Yes, we are. Thank you for being here in this early morning for us. Not a problem. All right, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen here. Please, thank you. All right, thumbs up to make sure everything can be seen. Yes, you can see that very well. Awesome. Well, um, hello, everyone. My name is Claude Jones. As Peter mentioned, I'm the Senior Director of Engineering for Walmart Global Tech, and I am truly excited to be speaking with you here today. Um, you know, when Peter asked me to, to talk about, um, you know, the grocery shopping experience, you know, I started to think about what is the best way to describe this? And um, you know, I wanted to come up with a theme. So the theme that we're gonna be discussing here today is around uh, the evolution and the evolution ultimately of the grocery shopping experience. But I wanted to take you all on this evolutionary journey on you know, how Walmart has advanced and improved the shopping experience. So what we're gonna be covering today are three evolutionary journey pieces. So we're gonna quickly talk about the evolution of technology, we're we'll getting into the evolution of Walmart, and then we'll dive into the evolution of the, the shopping experience, the grocery shopping experience for, for our customers. So with that said, I thought we can have a little bit of fun and um, you know, look at the evolution of technology. Now, I think we can all agree 
that technology is consistently evolving. And just in the span of 36 years, we've seen some major advancements of how technology has, has impacted our lives. Uh, and 36 years isn't that, that long. Um, so let's have a little fun. Now, um, the internet access has definitely evolved. You know, a fun fact when I was, was looking up, you know, in the US, uh, about 100% of American households had no internet connection. The world was not connected, at least on the US side, back in 1985. And as we see things progress, we've had dial up, um, broadband and, and fiber, uh, but specifically with broadband, I mean, we have speeds um, that, that can help support a lot of the streaming things that we have today, but even looking at fiber supporting 1 billion bytes per second, I mean, it's just insane when you start thinking about the data transfer and uh, what that's been able to do. And as we start looking at, you know, the speed and how data is transferred, I mean, this has helped with the evolution of how we watch movies. No longer do we have VHS cassettes that you have to rewind, you know, fast forward to kind of get to the spot you need. You can now access movies, um, you know, whenever you want, wherever you want. Um, and the catalog online is, is massive. You no longer have to store videotapes unless you're a collector, you know, in your home. The same thing with, with music. Um, you know, it's, it's endless. You can have an online catalog, listen to whatever, whatever genre of music that you want at any time you, you want. And, um, you know, being able to have to hold cassette tapes, rewinding, fast forward, doing all these things from where we are, were in 1985 to fast forward to right now, we literally have information uh, at the tip of our fingertips. And this is what technology has evolved um, to be. And I truly think it's fair to say that we now live in a connected society. I mean, the, the internet uh, is integrated into every major aspect of our day-to-day our -day lives. Um, to prove this fact, uh, I was look, again looking at some research and it was saying the average you know, individual has access to more than 10 connected devices in their household. Now, for those on, on the call, think about this for a second. How many devices do you have in your house? Do you have more than 10? When we think about mobile devices, the computers, smart TVs, whatever other connected devices that you might have, watches, how many devices do you have you know, in your household right now that allows you to be connected um, or to accomplish the things that you do day to day? Uh, and if it's more than 10, congratulations. But uh, let's see what people are, are there any uh, thoughts people have here? Yeah, eight. You have someone that has eight. Well, almost. Uh, so, um, all right, let's kind of move on here. So I'd like to, to talk about, um, you know, the evolution of Walmart. And as we look at the foundation of how technology has played a, a role in um, how we leverage the internet, how many people leverage the internet, um, the next journey here is really to discuss the evolution of, of Walmart. And um, Walmart started back in July 2nd, 1962. And it started by a man by the name of Sam Walton. And he opened this first store here called the Five and, and Dime Store out uh, in, in Arkansas. Now, the reason why this was so innovative during its time is that the business model was unique uh, from what some of the other, other stores were doing at the time where he was looking at lower price products, selling them at a higher volume, you know, for a lower profit margin. So that was, um, you know, the business sense. The other thing that was really innovative at this time is that um, he created sort of that grocery store experience to where you could go inside a grocery store, touch and feel the product. You didn't have to ask someone behind the counter to, to do any of the, the sh um, you know, to bring it to you. You could actually explore and experience a shopping experience which was just, which was new at the time. So as we stick on our, um, our evolutionary theme, Walmart definitely has evolved uh, over the last uh, 50 years, not only from a logo perspective, and you could see sort of the logo updates that Walmart has starting from 1962, but very similar to our technology journey, Walmart as a grocery store has evolved. And so I wanted to share, you know, a few fun facts um, about that. Uh, Walmart is the largest grocer in the country, at least in, on, on the U.S. side. 
90% of American households live within 10 miles of a Walmart. And so they have close to, you know, 4,300 stores uh, across the US. Worldwide, there's 11,000 stores, uh, uh, Walmart stores that, that exist. Um, the shopping patterns or the number of customers that Walmart gets, 270 weekly. And this includes both online and in-store uh, shoppers at Walmart. Walmart employs uh, over 1.5 million uh, associates in the US. That number jumps up to 2.4 million uh, across the world. Um, Walmart offers grocery pickup and delivery in uh, 2,500 um, or 2,100 um, and 800 locations respectfully. And then Walmart um, makes half a trillion dollars a year. They've been on the Fortune Fortune One Global 500 list, I believe, over the last seven years, and so they're they're definitely a, a big a big money maker there. So this is how Walmart has evolved, just from a, a store perspective. But as Peter was alluding to, backing this is a lot of the technology um, that that we see happening. So I work for Walmart Global Tech, which is part of Walmart, and Walmart Global Tech has four main I would say pillars of, of technology. Um, the first pillar focuses on the customer, the actual shopper, and it's used to enhance the shopping experience. And so if you went and shopped on the e-commerce site or their online grocery site, or even if you had gone, uh, gone into a Walmart store using the cash registers, the associates have handheld devices um, that are being used. Anything that is used to help streamline the shopping experience using technology for the customer or the in-store associate is what the bucket number one focuses on. Bucket number two focuses on what we call merchant technology. Uh, and this is the area that, that I work in um, day to day, but this is all about item availability. So Walmart has this concept of buyers, which are responsible for working with suppliers and understanding customer, de customer demand to figure out what are the product, products that we'd like to shell, sell, whether they're in-store or um, online. And with those products that we surface, how do we price them correctly? How do we go through and make them searchable? And, and how do we make sure that the right product and descriptions uh, that are available so that you as a customer can find them and you're getting what you want when you want it? The third is around our supply chain technology. And so this is about when you click that buy button, um, especially online, you're gonna get the, the products that, that you want to your home as fast as possible. In addition to when we're buying things for the store, we wanna make sure that distribution chain uh, is really quick so we can make sure that we don't have empty shelves you know, in, in a Walmart store. And the last piece and the most important is the data. As we're going through and understanding um, shopping patterns, uh, shipping patterns, um, you know, the, the data that we get uh, and how our users are leveraging our site. This is all flowing inside Walmart for us to understand and help predict and forecast the way that we evolve, um, you know, the products that we buy year over year, quarter over quarter, but there's a lot of data science, machine learning, um, and analytics that are pumped into the system for us to make informed, intelligent decisions on helping to streamline the shopping experience. So this is what the Walmart tech um, side is, is doing. So now we looked at Walmart the store and we've looked at Walmart tech. How the heck do these things come together to actually satisfy and build solutions for customers like you? Well, we're gonna discuss that uh, by the next stop on our journey and the last stop on our journey, which is the evolution of the, um, the grocery sh uh, shopping experience. All right, so we're gonna dive into a case study and we're gonna be talking about America's favorite pastime. And that America's favorite pastime is grocery shopping. Now, I want you to imagine, imagine something for me. I want you to imagine waking up and it's a Saturday, it's the weekend, you're waking up and you have to, oh, you have to go grocery shopping. And so you get up and if you have kids, you know, you're getting dressed, you're getting your kids ready, you're going into your car, you're driving down to the grocery store, you have to walk up and down the aisles, excuse me, um, and shop uh, and walk. Then you have to wait through a long checkout line. Here's an example of what the checkout lines look like in, in the US when you're waiting at a Walmart. Um, 
pay for the groceries, take the groceries out of your cart, load them into the back of your car. Then you have to drive home. Hopefully there isn't traffic. Load the groceries out of your car into your home, then put all your groceries away. And then finally the rest for the relax for the day. That sounds like a very tedious experience. And um, if I could get maybe some, some guesses on how much time do you think, uh, at least in America, or you could say for yourself, how much time do you think you spend grocery shopping? If I could have some guesses on, on, um, on Zoom here, the Zoom chat. How many hours a year do you think that people spend grocery shopping? So three hours per week. Any other guesses coming through? Four per week, four hours per week, three hours a week. I'll spy for others. <laughs> All right. My year if you spent a thousand, wow. Geez, a thousand hours last year with shopping. That's insane. Three hours a week. Well, um, thank you all for, for the feedback here. The, um, the average uh, trip, there's about 1.6 trips that people make to the grocery store. Um, they spend about 40, 43 minutes shopping. Now this isn't including you know the travel time from home and, and all that, but just kind of in the grocery store itself. But if we do the math and add this all up, we spend about 60 hours a year um, grocery shopping. 60 hours a year. And, you know, when we think about the uh, 60 hours a year, uh, you know, there's probably some better usages that we could do, do with that time. And so what I'd like to describe to you right now is imagine if we were to have a smoother shopping experience, the one that I described to you before. And if we take a step back, imagine now if you're in your bed, in your bathrobe, sipping on some coffee or whatever you like to drink in, in the mornings or whatever you like to do. And then you'd bring up your, your, um, your computer and on your computer, you have your virtual shopping list. And with that list, you're able to kind of go through and, and take a look at past purchases that you have done, but pretty much you're just pointing and clicking and uh, you have your, your grocery list ready to go. Now, as part of this, this shopping experience, you have the ability to, um, you know, check out and checking out in this case could say, hey, I'd love to pick a date and time to pick up the groceries that, that I have. And um, you select a time slot, location that you'd like to um, pick up your groceries, and then you're good to go. You click on the button, say confirmed. Now that's going to send off a note to the store to where now you have an in-store picker that will go through and pick uh, the groceries for you and everything that, that you need. And so these individuals are there to handle any substitutions, to make sure that that tomato that you want is as ripe as possible for the recipe that you're trying to do. But you no longer have to go up and down the aisles to go sh grocery shopping for you. There's someone that is doing that for you. And now uh, when it's time to pick up your groceries, you just go with the designated date and time that, that you had selected. You pull up to the designated spot. Uh, you confirm that you're there and someone comes out, loads the groceries in the back of your car, confirms that everything is there. You swipe and make the payment and off you go. You didn't have to really set foot in the store. You could pick up the groceries at a time that was convenient to you. Um, the only thing you have to do is drive home and um, you know put your groceries away. So this is just one example of how technology and bridging the digital aspect and the physical, physical aspect of Walmart is helping to simplify and regain you know, that 43 minutes um, of an experience for you. And this is just the beginning of what Walmart is looking at doing. And so what I described to you um, was the grocery pickup experience that, that Walmart offers. And so this is one way that we are hoping to transform the way that you shop. But we also offer um, unlimited grocery delivery. And so now imagining not having to, you know, drive down to the store to get your groceries delivered to you. We have uh, an unlimited uh, grocery service where people can bring the groceries to your house. Um, but then we decided to go one step further. Walmart has been exploring something called in-home delivery. So uh, you can go ahead and place your order, but you don't even need to be home. Walmart will go in and actually put your groceries away for you. And so what I'd love to do now 
And, you know, I'm going to stop sharing for a second and then reshare because I want to make sure that I have the optimal sound and uh, video experience here. So give me one second. Okay. What I'd like to do now is just share a few videos with you that talks about how Walmart is evolving, um, leveraging technology to help streamline and further evolve the shopping experience for, for our customers. So let's take a, a look at this unhome delivery uh, example. <sighs> I'm completely empty. And they don't care. They're gonna do their mother-daughter weekly matinee thing. Because they know everything is completely under control. They can see how completely easy this is. And that I'm completely taken care of. And we're all completely fulfilled. Huh, this is pretty great. All right, so that, that was an example of a pilot that Walmart is putting together. But you could see here, taking this delivery service um, you know, to the next level to where you don't even have to be home to have your groceries placed you know, for you. And you know, there were some questions around security and, and things like that. Walmart does go through a, um, you know, a background check uh, for a lot of these associates. And even if you don't want people coming into uh, your home, um, you can have a designated place to where they can place the groceries, uh, you know, for you. Um, in this case, now with COVID and a lot of things that are going on, obviously this in-home delivery service has has been has been been paused. But you know, again, it's just kind of showing you the technology and how things are being used. I'd like to also take a, a moment to share a couple of other innovations that that Walmart has has been working on uh, with voice commerce, um, drones. Uh, and even self-driving cars. So um, let's spend a few more minutes uh, looking at some other videos on some of the innovations Walmart has been putting together. So this one is an example of the integration that it has with Google Assistant. And this ties into a lot of the ordering that, that we do for grocery pickup and delivery. Uh, and so instead of having to log onto your computer to, to, to create your grocery list, you could do it in an ad hoc nature using a Google Assistant. So let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at this one. Okay, Google, talk to Walmart. Add orange juice to my cart. Hi, Lynn. I can get you Tropicana orange juice for $5.18. Add laundry detergent to my cart. Yeah, so, um, you know, one, this is a, a really interesting project for me because I actually worked on the team to help build the what they call a conversation editor that pretty much helps stitch the um, stitch the actual uh, you know um, the commands and the response that the customer would would offer and so you know instead of the robot talking very methodical and answering in robot talk we were trying to add you know a more natural conversation and so um, think about it as a um, you know, a, a flow diagram on just control and, and, and response between or command and response. And so we created a visual interface that stitched this together. So, um, so on the tech side, it, it was really cool to kind of integrate with a lot of the machine learning um, from that point of view. But even from a customer, a customer perspective, uh, I think it's just awesome to think about not having to pick up your computer. And if you're in the middle of you know, cooking or doing the laundry, 
or in the refrigerator doing something, say, oh, I'm out of this to be able to add it to a cart. And then when you're ready to kind of get things delivered, just say, hey, I'm ready for delivery. Boom. It handles everything behind the scenes. And the next thing you know, you got groceries. Um, either you can go to pick it up or you have groceries that, that are delivered to your home. So yet again, a way of helping to simplify the shopping experience to give customers back their precious time. All right, what else we got here? All right, now this this demo um, is awesome. And, you know, I think it was back in December, uh, two years ago that Walmart had um, started testing out, you know, self-driving cars. And so they had done a, a pilot uh, with a company in, in Houston. And this video uh, to me is, is awesome. And I, I really feel that, um, you know, this is the future, but this is something live that they're piloting, piloting in, in Austin um, out there in Texas. So let's, uh, let's check this out. Houston, Texas. <laughs> Are you serious? There it is. Oh my gosh. Because there's nobody driving this car. There's nobody in that. I'm Nick Camposano. I'm Kristen Camposano. We have four boys. We have our hands full all the time. <laughs> Grocery shopping is probably my biggest chore of the week. I'm Rosemary Nava, and I'm 81. <laughs> I do get busy. I'm still working part-time. And so I could see that ordering something and being delivered here would be wonderful. I'm Aruna. And I'm Anita. I'm an artist musician. I don't like to go to the store. <laughs> It's like a cute robot came down the street and delivered our groceries for us. It's an actual car. It has lights? Yep. I have never seen a self-driving car before. This is a first experience for me. I went and touched the screen. I put my pen in. And the doors opened. It was so simple. I thought it was exciting. My dog, Jack, thought it was exciting. You guys were the first ones to get donuts out of a robot. <laughs> Convenience is the future, right? We literally ordered food online and it just rolled up, but there's no driver inside. Oh, that's wild. Wow. We took it out. Once we were done getting our groceries, the doors closed, it said goodbye and drove off. It was a friendly car. <laughs> the price of delivery is so reasonable, something I can well afford. To be part of the first one. It's awesome. I love being ahead of technology. This is exciting. This is the future. I hope one day this is all over the world. But this is only the beginning. <laughs> yeah, this, I just thought this, this video was so powerful because I, I think it, it sums up, you know, when we think about um, just in a 36 year period, 36 years from 1985 to 2021, you know, you got self-driving cars delivering groceries. Now, who would have thought back in 1985, like, hey, we're going to have self-driving cars that are going to be delivering groceries to people's homes. And, you know, as, as part of the, the dialogue in this video, one of the points that were made is that, you know, um, convenience is, it's the, it's the future. I mean, that's, that's what technology gives us is that convenience. And, um, this is what Walmart is really looking at. How can we make sure that we're able to help give our customers one of the most precious things um, that's important to them? And that, that's time. It's that convenience so you can spend time with family and also making sure that we can get you the groceries um, you know, at a low price point um, you know, that you can afford. So uh, the last little video, <laughs> let me see here. The last little video is something that, that's short. It's a... Um, it's a little pilot that Walmart's been doing with, with drones. Uh, you know, they're still kind of going through this with, with some of the things, but it's just talking about some of the possibilities and, and things that we can do as we're starting to, to kind of play with drones and, and how that, that can be used. But um, it's crazy. It's crazy to see how things have evolved in just such a short period of time and the innovations are out there. And it just, it leads me to believe that, um, the future and the possibilities that we have, uh, there's no limit that, that we can put on it. And when we think about, excuse me, when we think about um, um, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, we think about AI and machine learning, uh, you know, think about just how, how things could evolve 
36 years from this point. You know, imagine being able to put on, you know, um, some virtual reality uh, uh, goggles and being able to be submersed in a grocery experience to where you log in and you could physically see, um, you know, you could see the, the, the product on the shelves, what's going on, picking things up, saying, you know, I want to add this to my cart and then checking out, you know, all from the comfort of your home, but being submersed in a virtual, you know, grocery store experience to see what's on the shelf and what's going on to pick what you want. Uh, or imagine or imagine with, um, you know, AI and machine learning that we understand uh, your shopping and consumption patterns uh, to where you never have to go grocery shopping again, that everything would be automated, that you're waking up and it knows like, hey, every month, here are the things that I want. You never have to pick up anything unless you want to augment, augment your order. So we are trending this way. And you think about the amounts of data, how we process all that data, and the fact that we are a connected society, the possibilities are truly endless um, and only limited by our imaginations on how that grocery shopping experience could be evolved um, or evolved. So with that said, I want to thank you all for, for the time, uh, for having me, me speak with you and allowing me to share with you at least a little bit of knowledge about what Walmart is doing and some of the innovations that we have. And um, you know, definitely uh, looking forward to answering any questions that, that you all have. Thank you. These were great insights. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. Uh, yeah, I also believe based on how quickly the technology is evolving uh, in a few short years, store owners will have to adopt all these solutions if they want to compete on the market, right? Yeah. Definitely. Uh, let me check if I see any questions, not yet. So you guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to add them now into the Q&A. Yeah, just a few years ago, Walmart didn't have a big presence in e-commerce, as I remember, but it kind of shocked the world when they, or when you guys bought Jet.com, the hot e-commerce startup for $3.3 billion, if I remember well, in 2016. Yeah. 3.3 billion. I mean, it's a huge pile of money, but as a result, Walmart's online shopping has really taken off. I find myself choosing Walmart.com as my go-to more and more instead of Amazon or any other online stores. Meaning you guys are doing a really good job. Congratulations, Thanks, for man. sure. Thanks. Yeah, you know, with with Walmart, I think the um, I joined Walmart back in 2012, and they uh, were losing market share to a little company you might know about um, called uh, Amazon. And as, as part of that, they decided to say, hey, we need to start doubling down on technology. And they started building their own in-house, you know, e-commerce platform, essentially being able to connect a lot of the dots, especially with their supply chain, their store, their delivery network is just insane and, and truly optimized. And so um, I think with Walmart's investment in technology, their goal was to help what we call bridge the digital divide. And so it was connecting the, the digital uh, experience with the physical experience with the brick and mortar store. Uh, and how can we help streamline that experience to really have technology complement the physical footprint? And I feel like that's where Walmart's differentiator is uh, compared to, to Amazon. You know, you're looking at close to 4,300 stores that exist in the US alone. 10% uh, of America lives within, uh, or 90% of America lives within 10 miles of a Walmart store. And so now um, by leveraging technology to make it easier for people to shop, uh, you could see how they can quickly gain some, some, um, some market share uh, from, from that point of view. And so, you know, there's definitely some things that, you know, Walmart can, can take advantage of if we continue to see technology evolve. Yeah. Meanwhile, we got a few questions, uh, Kat, uh, Kat wrote, Claude, thank you for the great presentation. Do you already do home delivery via drones? Yeah, the, the home delivery thing is, is, a, is a pilot that I know that they're, they're currently working through. Um, there's definitely some complexities there on the types of things that 
you know, you could actually order via drone, um, the proximity and location to, you know, where you are from that store. So in that sample video, I think it was more of a, a concept that they're double clicking on and exploring, but I, I know it's something that is happening, you know, in their innovation shops. So not, not yet. All right. What do you think about the future ID of the items? ID mean like barcode, RFID, video identification, QR codes, any research on that? Do, do I think that those things will go away or what was the, the question? Yeah, like what, what we will use in the near or either longer future for ID, identifying uh, items in the store. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like, you know, barcodes, you know, SKUs, the universal barcodes, G10, you know, a lot of those things will still exist, exist because they do represent, you know, a product and that product comes with its various attributes that you can classify to make it easier to, to shop. And so if we have a universal way of making sure that we can, well, we do uh, have a universal way of being able to, to classify products that exist. Now, you know, how could that that barcode or, or that level of information be used to help streamline and automate or even track when we start thinking about, um, you know, blockchain and that being used to maybe track the, the um, you know, where, where a product might be transferred as part of the supply chain or even looking at the freshness of certain products, how long they've been, been, been on, a, on a truck. Um, I, I could see that bit of information just being leveraged to help, you know, other innovative type Type solutions being on, but we still need some, in my mind, a unique identifier, um, you know, to, to track each product and what that means so it could be classified. Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Bolaj was asking, how about the in-store solutions? I'm not really sure what he means, probably like uh, what innovative technology or what are the near future technologies will be implemented inside the store. Uh, I, I can think about maybe like a virtual tour inside the store or something like that. Yeah, I mean, specific to Walmart, and we've seen things, you know, evolve like this with, um, with uh, Amazon Go, you know, you're walking into the store, there's no cash registers. Um, uh, there are people sort of, you know, monitoring, you walk in, you have your phone, you're able to kind of sort of scan a device that adds to your virtual shopping cart, payment and all that stuff is, is there. Um, it's able to sort of recognize what you have in your cart, you're just kind of in and out. So I mean, that that's further simplifying the experience where you don't have to wait through lines. And so you could see, and I, I could see a future where you have these connected, connected stores, at least from a grocery shopping experience to where you know, you don't have any employees in there potentially. And, uh, you know, the security and everything is just tight enough to where people can walk in and out. Uh, uh, you download an app on your phone and boom, there you go. I mean, they're, they're testing that, that stuff now. So I could definitely see that, that evolving, um, you know, in the store and Walmart's doing some things like this to where they have, you know, the self checkout um, to where uh, self checkout, they have self pay, um, there's other technology that they're using where um, the handheld devices, instead of waiting through lines, if you find an associate that's walking around in the store and you're ready to check out, they can check out, uh, check you out there right on the spot. And so they are doing things to help empower um, the, the customer to take control of their shopping experience if it's a physical one leveraging technology. Now, granted, there are things that we have to be concerned about because how do you deal with theft? Um, you know, um, making sure that the counts are, are correct. Uh, so there are some things that we need to kind of work out. Plus, you know, being able to update the technology across uh, 4,300 stores, um, that's gonna be fairly expensive, you know? So who knows how outdated the stores are, what needs to be done to be put into the stores versus kind of building a new store from the ground up and, you know, making it technology enabled. So. Um, over the next 36 years, I could definitely see that shopping experience being more hands off to where, you know, someone can walk in a store and, um, you know, shop hands free. Yeah, I agree. Does Walmart have any relevant feedback from the customers regarding their future expectations? Yeah, 
you know, <clears throat> we constantly, you know, Walmart has a customer, I guess, customer experience uh, department. Uh, they're really responsible for surveying, figuring out what, what customers want and what's going on. Um, I would say some of the, the general concerns that, that are being brought up, it's about how do you help streamline that experience and making it, making it easier. So the assortment, making sure that we have the right types of products um, that people are looking for, but it being very hyper, like being very centralized. So think about targeted, targeted, um, targeted inventory. So if you lived in a certain, so I, I live out in, um, in Southern California uh, in a city called Encinitas. So if I walk into my, my Encinitas Walmart, it would be nice to have products that are specific to my, my demographic or you know, my, my area, instead of it being this blanket, you know, every single store is gonna carry every single product. And so that's, that's where we get a lot of their feedback. Like how can we make sure that the Walmart stores are supplying the demand that customer um, and highly localized demand for, for our customers. So that, that's one thing where we're using a lot of data science and looking at forecasting um, to help with. Now, once that demand is there, I think a lot of the things that customers are looking for is the speed at which we get um, the products delivered to the home. And so everything now is instantaneous. If you're really interested in uh, you know, doing a recipe and you don't wanna have to drive in your car, it'd be nice to have same day delivery and save name delivery and what you need and deliver to you on time. And so when we talk about convenience and we talk about speed, that's the other bit of feedback that, that we're getting for customers because they want things now real, uh, near real time. I think the last is around um, you know, the, the customer service. There's still some things that we're working out uh, with Walmart as we're looking at bridging, bridging the digital and the physical experience together. So price matching could be, be one example. Um, being able to go in and say, hey, I saw this price online. I'd love to be able to, um, you know, get a price match in store, um, you know, connecting the, the technology systems behind the scenes to make that, that feasible. Um, you know, we're still working on streamlining that. I think the other thing is we start introducing technology. Walmart has grown so fast with the um, home delivery services or pickup services. And with COVID, you know, people don't want to go out. And, and, and be out in public. And if they're gonna go grocery shopping, they'd rather have Walmart uh, do the shopping for them. But with that influx in, in customer demand, there's also the thing around scaling. And so how do we scale, um, you know, making sure we have the products so that we're not running out? How do we scale the uh, employees that are working in the stores to do the picking that we need? Um, and then how do we make sure that we're scaling the, the actual system so that we can help process the orders that are coming through at a relatively place so people aren't getting queued and, and having to wait. And so the combination of all these things really translates to, are the customers happy? Because you can have all the technology in the world um, and the best product, but if people are unhappy leveraging or using the things that you have, they're not gonna be your customers for very long. Yeah, these are definitely really complex problems to have, yeah. Uh, the next question from Balaj, it's actually a really interesting one uh, because I really, really hate going to stores I've never been. The reason why, because usually if I just need a few items, I'm going to spend like half an hour running back and forth between lines like a crazy person because I just don't know where to find what items. And so what he's asking, uh, what about finding items easier in the stores, like virtual advisors, smart shopping carts, and so on? Yeah, man, this is, this is so, I mean, it's such a very, it's a great question. And um, it's funny. So in, in Bentonville, Arkansas, Walmart has a, um, it's a special team that uh, they have like this, a store. It's a, it's a mock store. It's a fake store that they have. And all they do, this group is all they do is they just test out crazy ideas uh, before things are rolled out. Some of the ideas see, see it in the store, some don't. So um, one thing that they have right now that are in the stores, if you open up the Walmart app, they do have like a, a product finder. So you could enter in the product um, that you're looking for and it'll tell you what, what aisle, you know, what aisle that product might be on specific to the store because it, each store has its own layout 
and products are, are set up differently because everything is like hyper hyper yeah. localized to that location. So you can understand the complexities of having a different schematic for each store and where things are changing and the f- products change all the time. So that that store finder, unless it's updated on a regular basis, you could see that it, it isn't useful. Now, Walmart did have something that they attached. I think it was like a smart shopping cart or some, I think that's sort of what, what it was, but um, they did have something um, uh, attached to the shopping cart itself. And then they had like geolocators, um, you know, and the, the Bluetooth in the store. Now, granted, with a lot of this technology, you have to make sure that the store is set up to sort of handle that, that connection. But what they saw is that people were coming and they were kind of breaking the carts. So you have all this technology that you had on these carts. But, you know, if they're slamming the carts or trying to dismantle the carts and removing that. So, you know, it's we introduce this tech and, you know, sometimes you can introduce tech in certain locations to where people aren't vandalizing things. And so we can't make it really accessible. So Walmart is exploring this, but I think it's kind of that balance on when do you introduce something, um, you know, to society or to the customer base that um, is secure, people aren't going to misuse it. Um, and heard it. So um, it, it's definitely a, a fine balance. But these ideas are, are great ideas and something I can definitely see over the next, I would say, five years, you know, coming to fruition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Robert is asking actually that uh, he's stating, and I can agree with that, that many times uh, in Hungary, the shopping and the shopping experience is kind of like pleasure time, right? So uh, and families are spending their free time like as a pleasure activity just to go into stores and shopping around. Uh, do you see any technology enhance to this experience? Uh, any, do you have projects in regard to this in the US? And also, do we have that in the US, this, uh, that people are spending their pleasure time as, as shopping? Yeah, you know, and that's such an interesting point. When I when I was describing the shopping experience, you know, I painted a picture of it being this daunting, you know, exercise. Oh my gosh, I have to go out. <clears throat> now, um, there are there are people that that deal with that. If you have you know some kids, and if this is your primary duty, and you just want to sort of relax for the weekend, um, you do have individuals that look at that experience being dreadful. Now, there are places in the US where people use a Walmart store as a gathering place. It's fun. I've heard some folks that have met their their wives or, or husbands or you know their their partners in, in a Walmart store. That's like the hangout spot to go shopping out of Walmart. So uh, by all means, uh, you know, the the experience is definitely what what people make it, um, you know, when they're shopping. So that that's that's one thing. So I think it's a good point on it could be considered like a good fun family gathering time to get out the house, go shopping and looking at stuff. Now, from a technology perspective, about three years ago, Walmart, um, at least on the technology side, they were going through and they were acquiring a lot of um, a lot of companies to help specialized companies to help um, improve their, their inventory um, on what, what they could sell to customers. They started exploring, um, you know, augmented in virtual reality, and I, I think it was Moose Jaw, and they deal with a lot of um, like outdoorsy type type equipment and, and things. But they created this virtual experience where you can go in and say, so let's imagine if we wanted to go shopping for a tent. So we go in, we wanna shop for this tent. They had this setup to where you could say, hey, I wanna go to this national park to see what the, the tent looks like and be submersed within, within the experience. So now if we take, you know, um, this person's suggestion about, you know, the, the family shopping experience being a fun, engaging type of thing. Imagine taking your family shopping and saying, hey, oh, here's, a, here's a tent um, and like, or some camping gear. Let's, let's go and test it out to see what it might look like in Yosemite, just as an example. And all of a sudden, boom, you're transferred there. You were in this virtual world to kind of see what it was like, how the camping gear would be set up and what was going on. I truly feel, and they had piloted this, and I don't know if you you see um, see these things sort of coming in the stores just quite yet, but for that, um, that's something that I know that is there. I have seen other videos where 
um, you can test out different hairstyles or clothing wear. So again, it's just leveraging, you know, augmented, you know, reality to where, you know, you could say, oh, imagine having your picture, like my face is right here on, on Zoom, clicking on a button and then seeing like on a screen, you know, if I had a hat or there was a shirt that I wanted to wear, or if I wanted my hairstyle to, to be different, you know, and I don't have much hair there. So it'd be interesting to see, but, you know, you could, um, you know, these are the types of things that, um, you know, the shopping experience, you know, is evolving and you could think about the fun that that would be fun to kind of test and try things out um, like that. So yeah, definitely. And again, I would say over the next five years, you're going to see some drastic changes on the way that, um, you know, technology is helping people further engage with the stores and the products that, that they sell. All right. What's your experience on COVID-19's effect on e-commerce? Um, you know, for Walmart in particular, I think we were at the right place at the right time, meaning that we were already investing in, um, you know, grocery pickup um, and, and the delivery services, like we were investing in that. And so we saw a massive surge uh, during that time. And um, let me see if I have some, some numbers here, because I, I was just kind of looking at this the other day, but um, let me see. If there were some things that we had here. There were some numbers that I had with what Walmart had done, but I know we went on a massive hiring spree uh, for in-store <laughs> associates. Yeah, I read in the Forbes magazine that actually your uh, digital sales growth last year in Q1 and two, I believe, was actually four times higher than the industry average. Yeah, it was definitely four times higher than the industry average and what was going on. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that, that was very helpful was just the fact that we had, um, the fact that we had the... Like we were, the fact that we had our physical footprint being so broad and the way that we had tested and validated the, um, you know, our, our pickup delivery. Mm -hmm. And I, I think what, what's helped with that is just, um, you know, I think we have 3000 stores that have pickup. And so there's no contact, you can pick things up. And so that, that was a positive, you know, as news was being spread through from COVID, um, no contact um, pickup was important. Um, you know, delivery is something that, that we had as well. And so not being able to do that, our in-store apps. So for those people that did want to go, you know, in-store, we were able to quickly pivot with technology. And so for in-store, we had app features that allowed you to not have to, um, you can sort of shop online. I think someone's asking the question about like finding products and what was going on. So with our in-store app, we had updated that. We had integrated that with Walmart Pay. We had also integrated that with List. So um, if you had someone, I think the elderly was a, a big thing, right? The, the older generation couldn't really go, you know, out in public just because they were more susceptible to, to COVID. But so between our shopping app integrated with Pay and then integrating with List, people could, you know, create their list, aggregate that to a single person to have that one individual do the grocery shopping for, for that user. Now that user using the in-store app to quickly find the products that they want and then by using Walmart Pay, you didn't have to touch the key controls or anything. You can make all those payments um, through your phone, show your receipt, and boom, out you go. Um, also part of that app, we had um, a way of being able to handle um, order delays or certain ca um, cancellations and also products that were not available in the store, like the toilet paper and water were, you know, hot, hot items at that time. So um you know, within, I would say like a month, we were able to organize all the engineers to create, you know, these solutions that could help streamline the way that customers shopped. And I think because of that, because we were able to pivot so quickly, that was adding value to the customers at a time when they really needed it, which allowed us to see this, this surge um, in, in usage. So it's just right place, right time and having the right technology to back it. Right, right. Bonaj was asking on analytics and data science uh, on, on the e-commerce purchase behaviors, uh, customer segmentation and so on. Is that done in your organization or does Walmart have a separate department responsible for that area? We were talking about that in the beginning of the presentation. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Walmart has, um, so the data science teams, so Walmart does have a, a central sort of um, like business analytics or like a, a data science team. And they're really responsible for um, the quality of the data that's coming in. Um, how do we monetize the data, making sure that the, 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 the formulas that we use to maybe calculate metrics are consistent across uh, various parts of the organization. And um, they're also looking at ways of making sure that there's a common contractor interfaces to expose so that we can pull the data. So that they pretty, we have a group that sort of manages the various data domains that exist. So financial data, inventory data, pricing data, um, customer demand type, type, type metrics. So there's that piece. Mm -hmm. Now each, each org might have each pillar within the company might have their own data science. And those data science folks will be responsible for pulling that data, analyzing it and coming up with the various models on whatever we need to do. So those models could be anything that's related to, you know, forecasting, um, you know, inventory that might be coming in or what products we might, how we place products on shelves. It could be recommendations that we might offer our internal users on what um, scenarios or strategies that they should take um, in helping to sell products to customers. It could be in the form of optimization where we could go through and say, we trust the machine so much based on the trends that, that it's done that we're gonna allow this to be auto-optimized, right? To fully automate, you know, some um, different workflows that, that we have internally. Um, so we have folks working on models there and they might be specific to teams. And then we have data engineers. And so they pretty much take a lot of these models and operationalize it. So get that, um, you know, integrated and make that, that data and pack it up and make it accessible for, you know, our application developers to get that, that integrated. So, um, you know, with the data science and the data, you know, we have, you know, three different groups, you know, working together to get things surfaced, you know, to our customer or internally to Walmart. Yeah, I bet it's a lot of data uh, you store from customers. So your IT security must be uh, pretty strong as well, right? That should be a big department too, isn't it? Is it? Yes, it, it is. I don't, um, you know, as far as like the, the data security and, and things that are going on, like Walmart does spend a lot of time and, and money invested in, in that piece. Um, I don't have much insights uh, on the, the, the scale and the size and, and the types of things that we're doing, but it is um, what we process and what we do is, is fairly massive, at least from a transactions per second. Yeah, the last questions we have from Andras is what do you think uh, the barcode identification of the items will be with us in the next few years? Or is there any other identification technology what can replace the barcodes? You also kind of mentioned that already. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as replacing the barcodes, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure about that that one in, in particular, um, you know, as far as other scanning devices or other, other things to use to identify a, a product, um, I see, you know, the, that barcode being maybe complementary to helping to automate certain things and detect certain things. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I have a clear answer from, on that one as far as a replacement solution. Yeah, all right. Uh, is there anything else you consider important to share any experience or views on trends or anything we didn't cover? You know, I, I think we, we covered, you know, most of it as far as the, you know, trends that I see, I think trending wise, um, you know, people are starting to leverage technology more to do shopping instead of physically going into, to the store. Uh, and with COVID sort of accelerating a lot of our, our use of technology, I think you're going to start seeing, um, you know, the, the pickup delivery services being something that's more prominent, um, seeing a way of integrating, you know, a virtual or augmented reality, you know, imagine not having to leave your home, but still being able to experience, you know, an in-store experience uh, is something that I, I could see us as trending in. And then, you know, a lot of the automation, when we talk about data and understanding our, our shopping and consumption patterns, I could, I could truly see that um, the shopping experience, especially for grocery is something that could be, be automated. 
um, to where you never have to create a grocery list again. Um, you know, if you allow them to, to get the right information on you. So. Uh, yeah, I see actually more and more like smart fridges, even uh, measuring how much milk you have at home and so on. So yeah, I can totally imagine in the next 36 years, as you mentioned earlier, if those fridges are further involved, can be connected to directly to the store and uh, with the direct delivery. So if I'm running out of milk, it would be fulfilled directly from the store without even my interaction uh, or anything like that. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much, Claude, for sharing your infinite knowledge. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, it would be very nice if you could quickly answer a few short questions about this event. Uh, that would help our work a lot. Uh, you should find the link to the survey in the chat, or my colleagues will just, yes, they just dropped it there. Uh, I hope we will see everybody on Thursday at the next session of the Protector e-commerce series. If you haven't done so, please sign up for that event as well. You should also find the URL for that in the chat momentarily. Uh, that's where you can find more information about it too. Uh, and I also urge you to look around on the Protector website because you will find many interesting events in the upcoming weeks. Thanks again, Claude. It was amazing. Uh, thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Goodbye.